have been 12 rounds. He's been. And we know that in this case, the Russian judge would have given him a young man from now, from Australia, who came in with a 13-0 record, 10 KOs. And the interesting thing about him is, in his, ver his fourth pro fight, he was already fighting Juan Laporte in a 10-rounder. So he has been pushed ahead quickly. And he had the big amateur experience, uh, 259 and 11, he said, as an amateur. He got some good styles. He fought a lefty in his last fight. Doesn't think that Jake Rodriguez will be a big problem for him that way. Very cool, cool customer. We'll see how he does early in the fight. That's been his time. Seven knockouts within two rounds.
why Jake Rodriguez likes to think of himself as Rodney Dangerfield. Well, we will find out how it all plays out. And let's do that by going to Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser, present championship bout number three out of four. This contest is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Official and ringside shall remain the same. Along with the International Boxing Federation, supervisor at ringside for the IBF is Robert Weitzel. The three judges assigned to score this bout on a 10-point must system will be Bernie Cormier, Don O'Neill, and Chuck Jampa. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working in a world title bout. For the 107th time, referee Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Garden here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing in at 100. 39 pounds. He comes to us from the land down under, Sydney, Australia. His record, a perfect 13 and 0. 10 KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated challenger, Kostya Tsu. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the red trunks with white trim, Weighing 139 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Central Islip, New York, he brings a professional record of 26 victories with only two defeats, two draws, seven KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Jake the Snake Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez not looking at Costa Zoo, looking down instead. And we've, uh, we're heading into our third of four championship matches. That's the challenger, Costa Zoo. Young man from Australia, originally from Russia. And uh, Jake Rodriguez from Puerto Rico, living in the United States. Rodriguez is the left-hander. He makes no bones about it. When you say to him, what's your biggest advantage? He said, I'm a lefty. That's why you have to like a guy who knows what his selling point is, and down he is. Wow. Zoo that. wasn't kidding. That well, not is, being bothered by lefties. That is a shock. I am astonished to see Jake Rodriguez go down so early. He is not the kind of guy that goes down. Charles Murray didn't do it. Man, Costa Zoo with a big right hand, and Rodriguez cornered there. Zoo is very potent early, and Rodriguez told us, he said, I know he's going to be tough early. He said, I have to get through that. Let's see if he can do it. Well, knowing it and being able to do it is two different things, and he's in trouble again with the lead right hand. Charles Murray tried to hit him with that right hand for 12 rounds and couldn't do it. Costa Zoo has done it twice and hurt him here in this first round. Well, Jake Rodriguez shocked here in the first round. Here in his third title defense. Acosta Zoom going for it early. He knows this is his best chance right now. And a lot of patience by Costa Zoom. So, Jake Rodriguez halfway through round one, just trying to make sure he gets through this round. In his third defense of the IBF title, and so far it's a rugged one. Boy, the right hand of Zhu is getting in every time he throws it, Dave. I've Jake. never seen anyone land the right hand that often against Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez should try to tie up right now just to get through this round and slow down the pace. Costa Zhu is cutting off the ring effectively, scoring with his big right hand. Jake Rodriguez is on unsteady ground. 
A minute left to go in round one. Now, what is Jake Rodriguez doing in the corner? That's also not like him. He is. He was rocked by that right hand by Costa Zhu, and I don't know that he's ever quite gotten his senses back. Under a minute left to go in round one, the champion, Jake Rodriguez, has been down and has been hurt here in the first round. Jake Rodriguez is like a good pitcher. You have to get to him early, and Zhu has. The left hook has Rodriguez reeling. Rodriguez trying to fight off the ropes. Lands a good left hand. So it's survival time in this first round for Jake Rodriguez, and boy, he's having a hard time with him. 17 seconds left. They will seem like an eternity to Rodriguez. Jake lands a left hand. Costa Zhu, in his first major TV appearance here in the United States, has been all that he was advertised. My first look at him live as it is um, yours, and I'll tell you what, he's impressive. Listen to Dave now. Listen to Dave. Go on, Dave. Move your head and jab. Okay. If you don't do nothing in the next round, he's Yeah, he's doing it. So here it is, right here. Well, Zhu almost wins the fight right here. The jab by Rodriguez, he doesn't bring it back. The little shuffle step by Zhu. Very impressive, sets up the knockdown. I think his quickness there surprised Jake Rodriguez, especially for so early in the fight. Usually the feeling out process. And here again, it almost lands for Jake Rodriguez. A big right hand. He almost went out of here in round one. You know what that right hand reminded me of a little bit? Remember when Michael Nunn knocked out Sambu Kalambe? Yes. In the first round, no one ever thought that it could happen. It was a roundhouse kind of a punch just like that. In this case, Rodriguez didn't stay down. We're in the round two. It's scheduled for 12. Jake Rodriguez in the red. The IBF junior welterweight title holder against challenger Costa Zhu from Australia by way of Russia. And Zhu has shown us early that his reputation as a puncher the 10 KOs and 13 wins is legit. That impressive shuffle step setting up the knockdown. Rodriguez thought he could retreat a little bit after missing his jab. And that quick step by Zhu cut off the distance, and he went right at him. Had he tried to do that from outside, he would not have gotten home with that shot. Two minutes left to go in round two. And Rodriguez was outlanded 25 to 9 in power shots in round one. There were about three shots in round one, which nearly ended it on him. Jake Rodriguez again, putting himself into the corner. That's very unlike him. It's a sign of a fighter who's a bit unsteady. And Zhu landed the right hand again. And if you've not seen Jake Rodriguez fight before, it is astonishing to see him getting hit with these many right hands. So is cutting off the ring effectively, and Jake Rodriguez is moving straight back after Zhu attacks, and he's making it easy for Zhu to go to that straight line and land the right hand here. There is uh, an abrasion underneath the eye of Costa Zhu. Under a minute left to go in round two. Jake Rodriguez has stabilized himself to some degree, but not able to do much offensively against Zhu. We're not accustomed to seeing Jake Rodriguez push his punches out either. He's pawing with his left hand. That's supposed to be his power hand. There's the jab. Now they told him, jab and move your head to Rodriguez. He's doing neither very effectively right now. Just getting nailed with right hands. There's another one. So, only a few seconds remaining here in round two. Round two has been as difficult for Rodriguez almost as round one. He hasn't been knocked down or hurt, but he's 
taken a lot of shots from Zoo. That'll do it for round two. We follow the Australian based fighter into his corner. What are you taking it? From the side. From the oh, side. Okay. Listen, use your lap. Pick the one up here. Pick the one up here. They must like what's happening. Not too many instructions. Rinse. Put them back in the ice, mate. Is he going to rinse? A look at those numbers, Dave. You don't usually see Jake Rodriguez being outlanded like that. And he throws a lot more. He's had some big numbers throughout his career. And Jake Rodriguez again taking more big shots. The right hand. Two shots from the outside. And Zoo's movement has been the subtle key to this fight. A little slide stepping. We head into round three in this IBF Junior Welterweight title match. It's scheduled for 12. Jake Rodriguez is in red. He's the champion. Costa Zhu, the challenger, has had Rodriguez down in round one and has had him hurt on a couple of different occasions. Fighters who have gone so many rounds, they understand the pace of the bout. They know when the ring is being cut off on them. But Zhu is doing it quicker than Jake Rodriguez expects. Rodriguez pushed him back with a good straight left hand. Let's see if that had any impact on Costa Zhu. Well, Jake Rodriguez must establish his mugging ability in this bout. Getting inside and making that kind of pace. Right? Pushing off, doing some of the dirty work, whatever the referee allows you to do inside, he must actually do that so that Zoo doesn't keep coming right in on him. And the jab is really part of that, though, because like that, he's got to hit, land the jab to get on the inside. Rodriguez showing a little bit more in this round. And Zoo is looking to plant that right hand behind a miss by Rodriguez. Let's remember, though, what Zoo's history has been and what Rodriguez told us the other day. He said, he's dangerous early, and he's going to try and get me early. If I don't go out, I think, as this fight wears on, he's going to get more cautious, and I'm going to come forward. We're seeing evidence that day already. He's talking about that as we were at the top that Jake Rodriguez from about round five on. The key is what did Zoo take out of him in the early part, and that's what creates the intrigue. Who makes the most of his best scenario? Now, there was a right hand by Zoo that landed, a good right hand. It didn't have the kind of impact on Rodriguez that the earlier ones were. Well, for the first time, he was on his heels when he threw it, too, because Jake pushed him off the mark a little bit. Costa is moving back a little bit more. He lands a good counter shot there. As usual with Jake Rodriguez's fight, it's starting to get fun. Under a minute left to go in the round. Good left hook by Zhu. Rodriguez trying to establish his jab here in round three, and to some degree has done it. And Zhu squares up at certain times, and he has stopped Jake Rodriguez's momentum for a minute when he did that. Well, it's still been difficult for Rodriguez to land his punches offensively. Zhu has done a pretty good defensive job. So in round three, things get a little bit more even. I don't know if it's a round that Rodriguez won, but he certainly did better than he did in rounds one and two. Nice crowd on hand here at the MGM Grand Garden, and they are being treated to some fine boxing. Alex Sanchez won in our first match by decision, and Gabe Rollis beat Freddie Lee Vittori the TKO after the second round. We've had knockdowns in the first round of every fight. It's true. <laughs> what would be the uh, proposition bet on that, huh? How about for sweeping the card at least 100 to 1? Yeah. See, I'm going to pull on his arm back, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, two things. two things, two things. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. The hook, and don't let him get to that. Bing, bing, bing. When he tries to get set, bing, bing, bing. When he tries, okay? He can't fight unless he's set. The hook is well, Jake Rodriguez getting a sense of what he must do here. Countering shot over the top, and he actually made Zoo miss. So he threw off the distance 
of Constanzu there in round three. We head into round four, and the advice they gave him, very interesting. They said Zoo can't fight unless he's set. They want Rodriguez to initiate the pace a little bit more. Maybe, you know what? I disagree with their analysis after that round because Zoo has shuffled himself into position to get set to do his best damage thus far in the fight. He's had some very quick feet and gotten himself some good punching opportunities. And there's another example of it. He turns quickly and set up his own shot. Right hand by Zhu, but Rodriguez got a left, a right hook in. I wonder though, even though Jake Rodriguez isn't landing that effectively, is he starting to make a small change in the tactic of this fight? He's certainly been able to do that in the last half of the round, and here tying up, slowing down the pace. You're seeing a little more of the Jake Rodriguez left hand. He's starting to make Zhu miss a little bit more, although Costa is still, I think, landing more punches. And Oh, good right hook by Rodriguez. Pushes Zhu back a little bit. Costa, a young man who had a great amateur career in the Soviet Union. Won over 200 fights. Moved to Australia a couple of years ago. Has been a, a real favorite in that part of the world. He's really got a nice build, too. You can see him both as a slick boxer and as somebody with some pop. He is the the uh, quintessential boxer puncher. One of the actual rare ones. So many of the fighters call themselves that, and they're not. That is true. <laughs> Sometimes they're neither. <laughs> Over a minute left to go here in round four. Al Bernstein, Dave Von Tempo. Happy you joined us on the eve of the Super Bowl. Got some super fights going. And we're seeing the grittiness that we expect to take place in this bout. Jake Rodriguez has recovered and now makes maybe his biggest statement of the fight there with the right hook. He'll try to go back to it. Rodriguez has a pretty good right hook when he throws it in a compact way. He is not getting hit as often with those right hands now. You have to say that for Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez has to force the pace of this fight throughout the middle rounds to try to set up something big at the end. He cannot let Zhu coast during the middle rounds here. Straight left gets in to Costa Zou and there's the right by Zou. Richard Steele getting some help from Rodriguez who wants him to warn or take a point away from Zou for holding behind the head. So we wind down in round four, a round in which Rodriguez has had some better moments, but Costa Zou is still pinpointed them with some of those good combinations. Fernando is in the locker room of Billy Schwer, the fighter from England. Let's go to Fernando right now. Thank you, Al. Billy, do you think the uh, Ruelas at height is an advantage or a disadvantage to you? Hi, um, it's not too much taller than me. It's not a lot in it, really, so it's going to be um, a good fight. He's not all that much taller than me. He's only about an inch, inch and a half taller than me, so I don't think it's going to be a disadvantage at all. Have you found anybody that, uh, in, uh, with his uh, physique, you know, he's tall, lanky? Yeah, a um, couple of fights ago, I fought a Canadian, Howard Grant. He was unbeaten. He was very tall, very much similar to Ruelas. Thank you very much. Good luck. Back to you, Al. Thank you, Fernando. We peek in on uh, Costa Zoo, and here's Jake Rodriguez with some action. And body by Jake and left hook by Jake. <laughs> it's just a shot in there, and maybe he's getting his range in this fight. We'll see. We head into round five. We swear one of the numerous fighters who have not fought in the United States on this card. Right. The total right. through round four. Interestingly, it's not that one-sided. 101 punches landed by Zhu of 282, and 74 landed of 245 for Jake Rodriguez. But the knockdown, of course, giving Zhu a bigger edge. And Jake Rodriguez is trying to turn the complexion of the fight. But Zhu is more durable than his other opponents, and Zhu has the knowledge of that fast start, which he has been able to play off. Jake Rodriguez looking to Richard Steele for some help. Good right, hurt Rodriguez. Couple of good rights by Zhu. Looked like it rocked Jake Rodriguez. Gave him a brief taste of spaghetti legs there. Another right. 
Jake Rodriguez showing us a lot of grittiness here. He's, he's backing up. I think he's, he's taking some up. big right hand leads too. Costa Zoo landing more right hands against Jake Rodriguez than I think anyone has done in the last five fights I've seen him. And Jake is hurt. And, and Jake cannot be standing there like that. He's taking one big shot trying to load up, but Jake Rodriguez is not a puncher. He is definitely hurt. Costa Zoo has him in trouble. What is keeping him up right now? I don't know. He has been rocked with those right hands. And there you see Zoo again turning into his punches. And Jake goes down. That was a knockdown. I don't know why he didn't call that a knockdown. Jake oh. went down on his own. He went down so he could get the rest. Bad call by Richard Steele. Yet another bad call. That's a horrible call. Or a horrible non-call in this case. Jake went down because he was hurt. Well, Richard Steele blew that one. Good hook by Costa Zoo. And more pressure by Zoo here. So Jake Rodriguez suffering through a terrible round five. And he catches quite a break. It's not called a knockdown. This should be a 10-8 round. Yeah, huge break. So he got the benefit of going down and still got the rest, but didn't get the knockdown called against him. Either way you look at it, though, it's been a big round for Costa Zhu. Half a minute left to go in round five. There's another right by Zhu. We were told this young man was a puncher, and he's showing us that against Jake Rodriguez. Not a guy you can hurt easily. Think of all the fighters who could not do this to Jake Rodriguez, starting with Charles Murray. Charles Murray among the most elite of this group that hasn't. Ray Oliveira couldn't do it against him. Sergey Artemio. That'll do it for the round, and Jake Rodriguez ambles back after another tough one. You all right? Yeah. Okay. I have to listen to Dave then. Okay. Let's go. Oh, no, that's it, man. Yeah, yeah. Stop it, stop it, stop it.